people expecting pensions soon and those working for, to fund the pensions of today in the hope of receiving a pension tomorrow to do otherwise. Uh, particularly concerned about women who have been taking time out of work to raise children and who have been penalised uh, for having done so. And I know that the Pensions Commission is going to look at that as a matter of priority. But the motion this evening brought by Sinn Féin is a, is a purely political motion and they would have you believe that if in government they would reduce the pension age and reinstate a right to retire at 65, a right that never actually existed. There isn't a vision about how pensions are to be funded over time, how workers of today are to pay for it or to get one themselves. And what they do, of course, in Northern Ireland is, again, completely different. In Ireland, the pension age is 66 and the contemporary state pension is over 248 euros a week. In Northern Ireland, the pension age is 66, but it's considerably lower at only 195 euros a week. In Ireland, we have to look at the pension age increasing over time to ensure the workers of today will get a pension in the future. It's dishonest to suggest otherwise. In Northern Ireland, the exact same change is being made. Presumably, Sinn Féin and Northern Ireland recognise the same risk of the pension age remaining at 66 as it is there to the young people of today. Not a risk to those drawing the pension today or about to draw the pension, but to the younger workers who are funding it and who presumably hope and expect to have a pension of their own. That new law agreed by Sinn Féin in 2012 explicitly states it is a change to increase the pensionable age for men and women progressively. Age Northern Ireland and Age Action NGO comment on the state pension in the same way. There are more changes planned. From 2019, it will increase uh, for men and women to 66 by October 2020. And the government is planning further increases, raising the state pension age from 66 to 67 over time, kept under review, and it could change again in the future. And indeed, we know it's planned to go up to 68 in the years beyond that. So the next increase in the pension entitlement age in Northern Ireland is scheduled to come into effect in 2026 when it's going to go up and up again and I can go through it all month by excruciating month but that is the law in Northern Ireland uh, as agreed by Sinn Féin there. But here Deputy O'Reilly and her colleagues argue it should be 65. Um, be very clear in Northern Ireland where they are in government it is 66 but here they argue it should be 65 and they will put up videos and press releases etc that have already gone out to say that if she is a minister in the next government she will restore the right to retire on a pension at 65 notwithstanding that it's not where it is where they, Sinn Féin are in government and notwithstanding that no such right ever existed here at all. Pension age was never 65. There is no mandatory retirement age. It was always something a function of employment contracts and something that Minister Humphreys has asked the Commission on Pensions to examine. Given the difference of €53 Euros a week now between the, pension age and, between the pension in Northern Ireland and here, I would rather myself be under the arrangements under this House. There are other benefits here, again unmatched by Sinn Féin in Northern Ireland. Significant differences to the supplementary benefits for pensioners in both Ireland and Northern Ireland related to energy costs, a completely different household benefits package here than in Northern Ireland, a completely different arrangement in respect of supports, important supports for people like TV licences, and a completely different structure for fuel allowances and cold weather payments where in Northern Ireland you can get a cold weather payment of £25 a week from when there is very cold weather, payable when the temperature is or is forecast to be zero degrees centigrade or below for seven consecutive days as defined by the Met Office. So far since the start of the 2021 season, no cold weather payments have been made, but it hasn't been a very cold year so far. But I did see a very worrying forecast on the news this evening. Either way, I wouldn't like to be planning my winter heating on that basis. And I imagine pensioners in Northern Ireland, depending on it, don't like it either. So where would you be? Where would you rather be? Facts and a higher pension here, or just milk and honey in Northern Ireland, where you can get a cold weather payment after seven days of actually freezing weather.